But hopefully in the next two weeks, there's gonna be a test call open. But this is only one skein of yarn. So I splurged. Pretty good. I'm just gonna rip it out. Hello and welcome to Golden Hour Knitwear. My name is Camry and today I just have a regular podcast episode for you. We're gonna go over finished objects and works in progress and new yarn that I got. <laughs> um, so yeah, get all cozied up, grab something to knit and let's just chat. All right, I have three finished objects and this is weird because I tried filming this the other day and then I went to edit it and it was just grainy and blurry and awful. So here we are finishing it or refilming it today and I have a new finished object since the last time I tried filming. So like, this is a weird episode for me. <laughs> but uh, let's see, so I have three finished objects. One of them is a spin. So if you're new here, hello, yes, we talk about spinning. Sorry, not sorry, you're gonna love it. <laughs> okay, but first off is my, okay, and these don't look very fresh anymore, so bear with me, uh, don't judge me. <laughs> but these are my socks. I spun the yarn for these socks. This is my first, like, project knitting with my own hand spun yarn and it was so much fun. I absolutely love these things. Look at them. Okay, don't look too closely. <laughs> They're, they've been well loved. I'll just say that. They've been well loved in the last two weeks. So I, last episode about two weeks ago, a little over two weeks ago because of the silly filming experience. Um, but a little over two weeks ago, I had one of these socks finished and I hadn't cast on the second sock yet. But then when I was filming that episode, right before it went up, I cast on the second sock and I started knitting it. And in the time it took me to film that episode, I got to like right here or something like that on the second sock. Um, and the next morning I finished up the foot and pretty much just finished it that day, I think, the next day. So I think I finished that second sock within almost 24 hours. I can't even remember it. I mean, it was two weeks ago, but I absolutely love these. This is a uh, BFL Tessa Silk blend. The, it was dyed in the wool. So just a braid of fiber dyed up. I, I took it and I spun it up into two, um, fingering weight plies and then I applied them together. So it's a two ply. It's about a DK weight ish, ish, heavy ish, because, uh, it's hand spun and I'm, new to spinning. This is my first full, no, second full skein of hand spun yarn because I've spun on a drop spindle before and done lots of like little bits of spinning before but never finished a full 100 gram skeins or a full 100 gram skein on a drop spindle. I've never finished a full 100 gram to four ounce skein on drop spindle. And then I got my e-spinner for Christmas and I've just been going nuts. So this is my first or my second full skein of yarn ever spun and I've knit socks up from it. I have a lot left here. It's right here. It's right here. This is what I have left. I don't anticipate using it anytime soon. So I did put it back into a hank. I honestly don't know what to do with this. I might be able to get a second pair of socks. I anticipate needing parts of this to like patch up holes and whatnot in here um, eventually. But anyways, I, I thought about getting into like weaving and make cute little scrappy woven um, project bags, like for socks and stuff like that. Uh, but we'll see, that's just another hobby. We, we don't have time, we don't need another hobby. So I don't, we'll see, that might happen far, far in the distant future, but, <laughs> but it's an idea. All right, so that's one finished object. The second, well, I, I will do that one third just to kind of bring you into projects. The second is this one, is my striped sweater. So I started this, when did I start this? Like October, September, October, somewhere around there. I started this forever ago. And let me tell you, I told you in the last episode that it was in timeout because I just couldn't. <laughs> it's not that it's not an enjoyable project. It's not that I don't like it. I absolutely love it. Um, and I actually posted the finished object on Instagram this morning and wrote up the post and all the details about it. And then I realized why it took forever. It took forever because I ripped the yoke. I knit the whole entire yoke and ripped it out like three times, four times. And then I knit the body smooth sailing, knit the sleeve smooth sailing. I ripped out the bottom hem three or four times just because I, I couldn't get anything to be exactly the way I wanted it to. I changed my mind so many times on the gauge, like what I wanted my fabric to be, whether it was loose, too loose, too tight, you know. 
because I want it to be somewhat flowy, right? So I want looser gauge, but not too loose where it's, you know, too loose. Um, I wanted my stripes to hit at exactly the right place. Um, at one point they were lining right up with this neckline and this is honestly the first striped sweater that I started. Like I've knit a striped sweater for my daughter, but that happened if, like a couple weeks ago. That was a month ago-ish now probably, but that was a month ago. And this started months before I did that project. Anyways, so I didn't realize that having a stripe right next close to this collar is gonna make the stripe all funky and wonky. And I didn't love that. So I had to rip it out and restart placing my stripes in better places. And then I had to figure out how I wanted my stripe to be at the body right here so that I could make my sleeves line up with the body because I'm weird like that. And I like my sleeves to line up with my body <laughs> just like I did in the sunset sweater. So um, yeah, just, just um, gauge, stripe placement. I swapped back and forth between construction methods. It was still drop shoulder all the time, but just the type of drop shoulder method. Um, I swapped back and forth between that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so I ripped it out a lot. And then the split hem, I'll show you a little bit. So it does have a split hem. It is a long split hem, not crazy long. And then it it's cropped. So the split hem starts at about my natural waist, maybe a little bit lower than my natural waist. My waist right here is right here. And then like, you know, what is that? Like an eighth of an inch or something like that beneath my low, my natural waist is where the sweater, the body of the sweater stops and the hem starts. Sorry, I forgot to put my phone and do not disturb. Okay. So, so yeah, it's cropped and I was worried for a while that it was too cropped, but then I didn't want to add length because then the stripes wouldn't be in the right spot before the hem and just blah, 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 blah. It was just, <laughs> it was a, a journey, but needless to say, I learned a lot through this this project. There were so many times where I was like, okay, I love the idea and concept, but I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> and so after I showed this in the last episode and said that I was in timeout and I'm not working on it for a while, um, I got thinking about it again and I realized I don't hate it. I just need to change my idea. This is not what I expected my sweater to be from the very beginning. And that's okay. Sometimes you just have to change the way you're going to do things. I was going to have a long rounded twisted rib split hem and that just wasn't working out. I just don't love the way the twisted rib looks in this gauge and I didn't want a tighter rib gauge to make the body scrunch up on itself and with the two fingering weights held double somehow just made the ribbing weird. I don't know. So I just went with a regular rib and I honestly love it the way it is. I think the the regular rib just works really well with the marled stripes somehow. I don't, I don't know. It just works better. So it's not exactly what I was expecting it to be when I first set out, but I, and it's okay. I learned that that's just not the case. Sometimes things are not going to be the way you expect when you first set out and that's just the way it goes. You just gotta pivot and, and, and change and go from there. Um, a little bit more about this one. I don't have any numbers right now. I literally finished it last night and it was finished blocking this morning. So I haven't measured it or anything, but I will say it's not, I'm guessing it's maybe six inches of positive ease, four to six inches. I have, maybe it's more, I don't, I can't just tell off right off the top of my head, but it's not super oversized, but it's not like fitted or anything. The hem in the back is slightly longer than the front. And every time we bind off the hem or a cuff, it's a tubular bind off, but in the contrast color used for the collar, which I think is really fun. I think it just pulls everything together a little bit better. And I really love the way that it looks. This sweater is knit with two strands of fingering weight held double so that when you do the neutral stripes or like the main color stripe, um, you're holding two colors, two strands of the main color together. And when you do the other stripes, you hold the contrast color with the main color so that you have the main color working all the way throughout but then you just have your stripes marled. I've really struggled coming up with a name for the sweater and I even chatted with ChatGPT about it like what should I name this sweater? <laughs> they gave me lots of ideas and none of, them have, and none of them really like hit home for me. The best I can come up with for right now is the hazy stripe sweater but I don't love it. I mean that's the best I've got. I don't I don't know what else to do. That might be what it is. I might decide I love it. <laughs> but if you have any other ideas, let me know in the comments. Give me some ideas because 
I'm not totally settled. But for now, tentatively, this is the hazy striped sweater. Since I just barely finished this last night and I just barely finished blocking, I have not begun the grading process. I have started writing up the pattern and the whole grading and writing up the pattern process will go much faster <laughs> this time compared to the sunset sweater just because I have a pattern to work from. I have a top down drop shoulder pattern to copy paste, you know, the, the basic formatting, the words and stuff like that. And I know how to grade now and I don't have to like totally start from scratch with all of those things. So it should go a lot faster. Though, I am going on a trip this week, fairly soon, so I don't know if I will get a test call for this up before our trip or after our trip. But hopefully in the next two weeks, there's gonna be a test call open for the Hazy Stripe sweater or other name, insert, insert better name here. <laughs> but yes, I love this. Um, whenever I see, like I filmed a reel for it this morning and I look at it, I'm like, oh, I like that. That looked out, that turned out good. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I'm, I'm just really glad that I went for it. So yay. <laughs> if you remember, if you've been here since the sunset sweater, uh, you know that I did kits for the sunset sweater and I had a yarn support for my testers that chose to take advantage of it for the sunset sweater. I would love to do the same thing for this one, but I don't know for sure if I will have the time or bandwidth or anything. I'm finishing up dyeing sunset sweater kits right now. Uh, hopefully I get them all out the door by the end of this week, but we will see as long as I don't run in, into any more issues. <laughs> but, and then I'm working on a collection, a hand dye yarn collection, and that's gonna be end of March, beginning of April-ish. And I couldn't limit myself, like I, <laughs> I couldn't narrow it down to fewer colorways. So it's gonna be a lot of work to dye everything up and, and get everything ready for the collection. But, so I might have to not do kits for testers for this one, but we'll see how it goes. <laughs> also, it kind of depends when the test call comes up, but I'll let you all know. Keep your eye on Instagram if you are interested in test knitting this one, because I update Instagram much more often than I do here. So if you're new here, go follow me over on Instagram at goldenhour.knitwear just to keep your eyes open for those uh, for that test call. Okay, and then my other finished object is a spin. So let's see, it's right here. And this was one of my goals was to finish this skein of yarn, finish spinning up this fiber before we go on our trip because I want to be able to knit this whole thing on our trip. <laughs> so this is my rainbow tweed yarn. I showed it last week and I showed a swatch of what it looked like knit up. So I, I had half of it spun up last week and I had the swatch knit up because I realized I had much less yardage than I was expecting to have. <laughs> it's about a DK weight-ish yarn, maybe a little heavier DK weight. It's hand spun, so obviously some places are heavier, some places are thinner. But here's my swatch. So I basically, I couldn't find a pattern that had the same yardage and for a DK weight. And so I grabbed really big needles. I dyed up some Surrey, held it with some Surrey, and just knit at a really loose gauge. <laughs> and so this is the swatch that I came up with. It's very loose gauge, held with a gray Surrey lace which I actually really am happy that I'm holding a, a Surrey with it because it is, and I haven't set the twist on this yet. I need to do that like today. I just wanted to be able to show you before it's all wet. <laughs> but as you can see, I took the gray, okay, so in here I have gray, I think it's Corydale roving that has rainbow tweed bits carded into it. So I spun that up into about a fingering weight yarn, and then I I got some bare, just white, pure white um, baby alpaca, or just alpaca, I can't remember what type of alpaca, it's a fancy alpaca, uh, roving, and spun that up into a fingering weight, and then I applied them together. Now I think alpaca weighs a little bit more than wool does. I thought it was opposite, but after this project, I'm very doubtful of that. I, I think alpaca is a little bit heavier because I have very much less yardage of the alpaca than I do of the rainbow tweed. And so I have a lot of, not a lot, I have some rainbow tweed left on a bobbin, just chilling, and no alpaca to apply with. So I have much less fiber or yardage than I was expecting. And I have this, it's going to be marled when it's knit up, right? Because it's gray and white marled together. Because, I mean, we have the barber pole effect going on here. That's not my absolute favorite thing. I mean, I do love marling things, as you can see. <laughs> but 
I don't know if I want this whole entire sweater to, to be that wacky, especially because it already has the rainbow tweed going for it. So I'm glad that I had Surrey to dye up a light gray color. So it's in between the white and the medium gray in the yarn. So this some this shade sits between the shade of the white and the the medium gray here. So it kind of holds it kind of pulls things together a little bit, right? Makes it makes the marling a little more subtle, which I love. Um the reason I chose to ply the rainbow tweed with a neutral yarn is because I wanted to spread out the rainbow a little bit and so it didn't look like just a big barf of rainbow all over me because I love color but I'm a little scared to wear a lot of color. I'll, I definitely wear color but I'm not like an all neutral person but I I can't just go boom rainbow on me so so I'm glad that I did that. I think it turned out really really well. I love this watch. It's really fun. It's just a nice subtle hint of rainbow tweed. I think it's really fun. So. I actually started knitting it up. So now we're into whips, I guess. This is a good leeway into whips. So I finished up the, the spin. I have much less yardage than I expected, which is kind of a bummer. And I'm scared that I won't have enough to finish this project, but I'll, I'll get, I'll get unique, or what's the word? I'll get creative. <laughs> Hard word to come up with. <laughs> I'll get creative. So I've started knitting this actually. It's a drop shoulder, because I love drop shoulders. We all know that for by now. I haven't got the collar on there, so it looks a little funky, but this is only one skein of yarn. This is a little less than 200 yards, and I've got a few inches past the sleeve opening. I've got, I've worked in the round for a few, like three inches, two inches, something around there. Um, so I think this is about half as long as I want my sweater to be ish, maybe a little over half, if I keep it somewhat cropped. So I think with this being one skein, I have about three more skeins of this, you know, same amount of yardage, I think I'll be able to finish. I hope. If not, like I said, I have some extra rainbow tweed just sitting on a bobbin. I could ply it on itself and use it for the cuffs or because I can't find that alpaca on Etsy anymore. I think the seller is out um, and they're just not offering it anymore. Though I'll keep my eyes open just in case it is available still. And then I can just go get some. And if not, I can just find different white alpaca and hope that it's not a huge difference in like gauge and 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 look and whatnot. I'm scared to just take a white wool to ply it with because wool is very different than alpaca. Like they're going to be different. Alpaca doesn't hold its shape the same way that wool does. And so my gauge would change, right? But worse comes to worse. I can just take the rainbow tweed that I have left over and hope it's enough plied on itself to do like the cuffs of the sleeves or the hem or maybe both or or the collar or something just just to stretch things a little bit more but this is what I've got like I said this is I think this is about half of the body and then I'll finish up the body it'll be that I, I did this within 24 hours it was so so fast here I'll show you the fabric now that there's more of it knit up so I'm eager to see how it goes uh, I don't know. I feel like normally with 200 yards, working at a worsted weight gauge even more, usually I, I can't even connect in the round with 200 meters or 200 yards. Wow, look at me. So I, th I feel like this is doing really, really good. So hopefully, I mean, fingers crossed. <laughs> Let's all just hope and pray that I can finish this with what I have and I don't have to get super creative with figuring out how to finish it without having the yarn. But I made myself stop working on this. After I finished my socks, my hand spun socks, I, I knit up this. I did the math and it's only, I think about four to six inches of positive ease. So not too oversized or anything, trying to reserve. If I needed, I could rip it all out and do like two inches of positive ease or something like that. But um, anyways, I, I knit this all up in like 24 hours because I loved it and it was so much fun. And, and I was just so excited about it. And then I made myself stop because we're going on a trip this week and I think it's the perfect card knitting. It's just stocking it and really engaging because it's rainbow and fun. <laughs> and so, so I'm making myself save it for the trip. And so hopefully it's all done by the time I see you next. So 
while I'm sitting here like, oh, I hope I have enough yarn, you all will know fairly soon <laughs> because this is your first time seeing it. So anyways, so wish me luck in the next like two weeks. I should be able to finish it up pretty fast. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, next up on the list is my Sea View sweater test knit for the Knit Pearl Girl. And before I pull this out, I just want to remind y'all, the requirements for this test knit is just the yoke and one sleeve and the collar um, by this Friday. And I have plenty of time to finish that up. I've just been taking it slow on this one because she is very adamant, like, don't stress yourself over finishing it. Just get the the yoke and the collar, or the yoke, collar, and sleeve done. and and all good. And I've been, you know, doing a lot of dyeing and finishing this up and stuff like that. But so here's what I've got. I'm almost, I mean, I'm making good progress on the sleeve. I, I've just stopped because I need to do some math to figure out the decreases. There's two halves to the sleeve. There, the first half of it is charted and it has you worth the decreases in very specific places. And then after that, I don't think it's charted after that and you just work your decreases over specific, um, you know, just like you normally do on a regular sleeve. Every so many rounds you work your decrease round, right? Though my my arm is short. I'm a short person, so I have a short arm, shorter arm than average. And so I want to measure it, to measure how much more I have than it and do some math to make sure that the decrease rate is going to work for me, make sure I don't have to change my decrease rate or anything like that. But Anyways, yeah, so here's what I'm working with. I love this color. I love this cable pattern. It's so soft and squishy. This is my worsted weight base, and this is my worsted weight base and my Surrey base held together, and oh, it's so soft and so squishy. I am a little sad that it's not done because it snowed the other day a lot, and it was freezing cold, and I wish I had this to just snuggle up in and just be so cozy but I didn't <laughs> just because I've had so much other like dying and, and finishing up this design and all those things to do. But anyways, I am really happy with it. I am excited to finish it. I think this is also going to be a really fun project to bring on our trip just because it's engaging, but not so engaging. Like I don't have to look at the chart anymore and I don't even need a cable needle for these cables. It's very enjoyable because of the way the cables are worked. You don't have to look at the chart, especially once you get through the increases very easy to memorize, very intuitive. Um, you just kind of have to read your knitting and pay attention to which way your cable is leaning and you're good. So I really love this. This this pattern, um, I don't know when it's coming out, but you definitely want to keep your eyes open for it because it's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. I was looking for the perfect cable pattern and then she put out the test call and I was like, yes, please me, because I love it. I love that the cables are like kind of dainty. I mean, there's some, these are two stitch cables. You have a couple six stitch cables in there um, to add some substance and make it be like, yes, this is a cable pattern, but they're not all over the place. And I love that because when there's a ton of thick, chunky cables, I'm like, mm, I don't know, it's a little too textured for me. So, so this one's absolutely perfect. Struck, struck a chord in me, perfect for Camry cable. So I'm really happy. I'm really happy. I'm very excited to finish this up and to wear it. And I think this is going to be the, the knitting that I focus on for the next little while because it's, or at least until we go on our trip, especially because I have the deadline, right? But also because this is, I don't know, it's just the one that I want to be working on. So um, I am working this in a colorway from the Sunset sweater collection from the Sunset kits which is now closed, so this is not being offered right now, but I think it's gonna be available in a collection coming soon, so <clears throat> keep your eye open. I love this color so, so much. It is beautiful, and keep in mind, these are the oopsie skeins. I'm working with the oopsie skeins. So I have like a little blue splotch there. Don't pay attention to that. Pretend it's not there. <laughs> um, I take the oopsies for myself, for myself most of the time. I usually am working with oopsie skeins. So just keep that in mind. But the color is beautiful. It's a beautiful creamy white color. I love it on the Surrey so much. It's so good. I need a billion of these sweaters. <laughs> I actually have a design in mind. And I'm, I'm currently dyeing up sunset sweater kits. And part of me is like, can I just accidentally dye up, you know, an extra two pans or something like that for myself? 
so that I can <laughs> have another sweater quantity of this because I love it so much. This is fog, um, but in the future it's not going to be called fog, it'll be called something else. So anyways, I love the color and I love the yarn. I just, it's so good. <laughs> All right, I think the next thing on the list is the re summer sweater. I hadn't started this last time. I just showed you my swatch. Here's my swatch. I, I was thinking of it, whoops, of a summer sweater type thing, like a spring sweater that was looser gauge with some lace, but not all the way throughout. So like stripes of lace with stripes of more simple knit, whether it's stockinette or garter or something like that. And so I, I swatched it and I loved it. And so I cast it on. I, I just showed you the swatch last time. I showed you the concept-ish. And then I, I worked up most of, actually I think this is, yeah, I worked up the back panel. I worked up the back panel in the last two weeks and I don't love it. So here it is. <laughs> and my go-to is, Drop shoulder. <laughs> I love drop shoulder sweaters. I love the way they look. I love the way they fit. So that's what I was going for with this. But now that I see it, I don't love it. I It's just not sitting right with me. And obviously you can't really see how something's gonna go just by looking at the back panel. Like you've gotta at least get in the round, get a collar on there and see what's going on. But the more I work on it, the more I look at it, I just dread working on it kind of. There's just something clunky about this garter stitch stripe. I'm just gonna call it stripes. And I'm a little concerned. It's not gonna have a whole lot of positive ease, but you know, drop shoulders, there's there's fabric right here. That's just the way drop shoulder sweater works because you've got the front panel going over, over your shoulder and you've just, I mean, you've got it. And I don't know how lace, having extra fabric in your lace is going to look right here. I feel like lace is not very structured and it's gonna be kind of funky looking there. And I just, I don't know. Plus, you know, lace doesn't ever look amazing when it's not blocked. <laughs> so I don't know, I'm not super confident in this one and I've not wanted to really work on it. I really should just finish the yoke, get a collar on there, maybe block it and see what I think from there. But it's gonna be a nightmare to grade. <laughs> and so, like I, I ripped out the back yoke like three times because the lace wasn't very intuitive. I had to, I ended up just charting out the whole back panel for myself so that I could work out the lace sections. And I'm happy with the way it looks, but I think a very, a much, much more intuitive and easy way to do it. And I think it'll look better too is if I do a raglan or a saddle shoulder instead. And so I think I'm gonna rip this out. <laughs> We're talking about all the ripping out. I think I'm gonna rip this out and do a different construction. That's what I learned with this this sweater right here, right? If it, if you don't love it, it's not that you hate what's going on, it's just you need to go at it from a different angle. So I think I'm gonna rip it out and I think I'm gonna do a raglan, which I don't knit a lot of raglans, so that's gonna be a lot of thinking and math for me. So I don't know if this is gonna happen super soon. I might you know, put this on the back burner for a little while. Um, I also kind of want to switch out garter stitch. I don't know if I want to do garter stitch. I might do like mostly stockinette, but with like garter ridges here and there, like pearl ridges, um, every like three rows instead of every other row or four rows, just because that's an even number. But we'll see. I don't know for sure. I do love the lace stitch. It's really pretty. Um, it's just the garter stitch seems too bold and chunky between the delicate lace. So anyways, I don't know, I'll, we'll, we'll see. I think a raglan will be much more easy to grade and write up the charts for uh, and make sure all the lace is lining up correctly once you join in the round because raglan, you're mostly working in the round anyways. <laughs> I also think uh, with a raglan, I can just keep, I mean, I could do this either way with the drop shoulder or a raglan, but I think it'll look more seamless if I keep the sleeves laceless for the most part um, and just mostly do those in stock in it or the slightly textured a stock in it. I just got an idea. Anyways, I have some options. I have some ideas to play around with. Whenever I sit and like really talk about this and think about it and dive into my problems with it and options with it, I come up with different options and I get excited to work on it some more. So so maybe I'll I'll get going on this again really soon. So I'll have a lot of knitting time on our trip. That's basically what we're doing. We're going to a cabin, we're chilling without a kid <laughs> for the first time since 
before we had the kid. So uh, my daughter's not coming with us, which is like oh, my heart. And I'm gonna miss my baby a ton, but oh my goodness, I can't wait to have a couple days, more than a couple days. I can't wait to have, I think it's four or five and a half-ish days of zero responsibility to just sit in it. That's all we're doing. We're just chilling. We don't have any plans. We're just going to the cabin to relax. And I can't wait. I am just gonna get a lot of knitting done. And if I don't, it's okay. We're, we could go out and, you know, explore the little town or whatever, but I'm excited. So that's, that's my plan for the next two weeks is to rip this out, do some math and research, <laughs> and then more math, and then, you know, some chart work if needed. And then I'm gonna cast it on in probably a raglan or some kind of um, modular, I don't know, something, something interesting, but that's where we're at. Hopefully you see some different progress on this next week <laughs> or in two weeks, but I am definitely pushing back my ideal release time for this one. I wanted to have a test call for this one recently, decently soon, but I just haven't touched it in like a week and a half. So it's all right. <laughs> okay, and then last week I also showed you my wood anemone pullover sweater. Pullover? Uh, I'm on a, I think it's pullover. <laughs> um, and if you remember from my first video of this year, the wood anemone is, I probably said wood anemone the first time. I can't ever say that word right. I always thought it was anemone, not anemone. So I just, I'm, I'm, I gotta retrain myself. But last week, so this is how I make nine. Basically, just to catch y'all up, I I ended 2023 looking at everything that I made. I loved the things that I knit, but I got to the end of 23 and I was like, here are the things I knit. Here are my very favorite patterns. None of those correlate. Like I didn't knit any of my absolute favorite patterns. I started a few of them. They're still on the needle, still working on them, but, or, you know, one or two of them. Uh, but for the most part, I didn't knit very many of the patterns that I absolutely love. I just knit whatever I could get my hands on for the most part. And I'm changing that for this year. I'm making sure to actually knit things that I absolutely love. The wooden enemy is one of those. I also really wanted to knit something with a lace yoke. Uh, I've never done that, so I was interested in that. Well, here's what we got. I started it last week. This is no progress from last week. Well, maybe like two rounds progress from last week. I basically, I started it. And then I was like, well, shoot. <laughs> the Surrey, because I'm using Surrey and it's hand dyed and Surrey doesn't take dye the same way that a superwash yarn takes dye. So they're not the exact same shade. Totally, like completely normal. Like that's, that's what is expected, right? With Surrey and a superwash base, not the same color. That doesn't work out so well for a lace, um, for lace knitting because it's marled, right? Which I'm, I'm, I'm okay with the marling. Maybe not so much for lace, but my biggest issue is that I think Surrey is fuzzier than mohair is. Let me actually show you, because I have some mohair and some Surrey sitting right here that are similar in color. So this is Surrey. And maybe you can't really see the halo on camera. And then here is some mohair. Maybe they have similar fuzz. I actually, looking at it with my own eye, I can see that the Surrey has more fuzz than mohair. Surrey is much fuzzier. So, and I know that like just doing some research, you can find a lot of like blog posts and articles and stuff saying that Surrey has a thicker gauge than mohair. Surrey is just fuzzier than mohair is. They're both technically a lace weight, but Surrey is a little bit fuzzier. It has a thick, a little bit thicker of a gauge and that does not lend to very good stitch definition. Now I'm very early in the yoke, like I have a lot of work to do and you know, that looks smaller than it is because you block it and lace really blocks out and opens up. But, and once I get a lot more knitting in there, you'd probably be able to see the stitch definition even better. Right now my little lace motifs are very small because there's not a lot of room. And so, so it's obviously more difficult to see, but so as I, I move along and get further along, I'll probably be able to see the stitch definition a little bit better once the motifs are larger, but it's just not doing it for me. Just the yarn combination is not doing it for me. I love the pattern. I love the yarn, just not together. So 
I've decided to rip it out because it's just not serving me and I'm stressing over the color too much to enjoy it. Um, or I'm stressing over the yarn too much to enjoy it. I'm just gonna rip it out. I It's not bringing me a ton of joy just because of the yarn combined with the pattern. So I think I'm just gonna rip it out. I decided that a week and a half ago, I'm ripping it out. Um, and then I'm gonna use the yarn for a different project. So, and I have a project in mind for it already. So I think I think that'll be good. I might re-knit the, um, like start that project again on different yarn later in the year. I might swap it out on my Make 9 or something like that. Uh, tentatively, I've just swapped it out on my Make 9. I still love the design and I would love to make it eventually, but for right now, I'm gonna give myself some space on it um, and knit other things. Especially because we're getting into spring here pretty soon and I don't need to be knitting a bunch of sweaters, so yeah. <laughs> I think I have one, two cast-ons, kind of. So I haven't cast this one on, I've just swatched it. I, I was mostly feeling kind of frustrated with the re summer sweater the blue one that I showed you the lace design and so and I'm much more excited about this one <laughs> and now if I want a t-shirt design to come out in the summer now is when I need to start working on it so I haven't cast it on I haven't done the math or anything but I swatched I dyed the yarn and I love it so I love yellow I don't think I really said that much here but I love yellow and so this is also that fog colorway and then yellow from my sea view sweater so this is a two fingering weight yarns held together very loose gauge i think this is an eight millimeter or, uh, eight millimeter a uh, us eight needle so it's very open gauge very loose open gauge so perfect for a t-shirt and then the yarn is the same as my re sweater but i don't think i told you it's a mix between it's a new base for me it's a mix between it's 50 percent super wash fine merino and 50% Pima cotton and Pima cotton I believe is one of the more fine cottons that you can get the softer ones and so this is really nice and soft I love it <laughs> I am very excited to work on this project and just get going on it I just have other priorities for the next week like my CV sweater dyeing up sunset kits and stuff like that like preparing for a trip and whatnot so and grading this sweater so I'm dying to cast this on, but I have to kind of wait a little bit. So hopefully I get time to cast this on the next, in the next two weeks. Hopefully I get a lot of progress in the next two weeks. Um, so yes, this is going to be a t-shirt, but not just any t-shirt. It's going to be very interesting. I'm not going to really say a whole lot right now, but it's not your typical construction. I'm very, I've knit it up in my brain. I think it's going to work. <laughs> I... I have my idea of how I'm gonna make it work, but I'm not, I've never knit it, so I don't know if it's going to work. I think it will, and I hope it will, and if I can pull it off, it's gonna be pretty flipping cool, so uh, prepare yourselves. <laughs> uh, jokes, jokes, but I am very excited. I can't wait to get going on this. It's coming, you'll see it. You'll see it pretty soon, hopefully. And I hope I have enough yarn. <laughs> um, it might be a very corrupt t-shirt. Or maybe I'll do the hems in a solid, in, in the, the white color or something like that. But Because I don't know if I kept the yellow recipe. I think I was just kind of messing around. I'll have to look at my notes and see if I wrote down the recipe for the yellow. Um, but I do have the recipe for the, the, uh, the cream color. So if needed, I could just, you know, lean on that a little bit. Okay, and then I casted on a new sock, and I'm very excited to work on this sock. Lately, I've been kind of like, eh, about socks, except for those hand-spun DK weight, because these knit up so fast, they're so fun to knit with the color changes, and it was hand-spun yarn, it was very exciting. But other than that, I've been like, eh, about about socks. But one of my friends on Instagram posted, she had a so shop update for her yarn, and I I've been drooling over it, seeing all of her like posts on Instagram about it. It's gorgeous. And I just love it. So, and I had the extra cash. So I was like, I'm gonna support you and I'm gonna get it. So I ordered, there was one skein in this base left and I got it. And I, I was so happy to get it. It's beautiful. So it's from the Casual Fashion Queen. Um, 
On Instagram, she's CFQ Yarn. Here's her label. So this is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. I, I don't know that I've worked with this base before, but it's very pleasurable. It's nice and soft. I really like it. It's a two ply, I believe. It doesn't say, but I think it's a two ply. And this is the love letter colorway. I love it. And I wish I could show you it in its hank because I think hand dyed hanks are just so pretty to look at. But here is the cake. I couldn't resist starting it. Look at all of those colors. Oh my goodness. So much fun. So I started knitting it up. I just have like a little bitty cuff right now. <laughs> but look how fun that is. I'm in love. I'm in love. I'm, I love this so much. I'm doing this on little nine inch circulars. This is my perfect little just work on in the car knitting. I have been lacking that lately because the socks that I have going, I have another pair of socks on the needles, but they're cable and they're not super easy to work on in the car. And then these DK socks were on DPNs and I hate doing DPNs in the car. So this is perfect, perfect little project. Um, I'm planning on doing, I don't have a pattern. I'm just using my numbers that I like to use. And then I'm planning on doing one by one rib for the a nice chunky cuff, but doing like the main color, striped with this is some of my own dyed yarn um this color cuff i think this color i haven't totally settled but every time i see these together i'm just like whoa yes <laughs> um but i have a few other options anyways so i'll do main color this stripe with this back to the main color so basically i'll have two stripes of this that's an easier way of saying that and then this also for the cuff or no the heel and the toe so if you watched last week or two weeks ago's episode my husband i finished his socks his socks are ribbed just like that. One by one rib for the cuff with those two contrast stripes. And then I think it's three by one rib for the whole sock, except for under the foot. Um, and then the contrast heel and toe. So I'm excited. This will be my version of those socks. I just think his looks so good and I want some like that. And so here we are, here it is. Some speckled yarn on a ribbed sock with a contrast color, taking out one of the colors of the speckles. So his was gray yarn with red speckles, so it's just red contrast colors. But this has so many different colors, I could choose so many different colors. I think the two colors that are popping out the most for me in this yarn, here, you can see better here, is the orange, the yellowish orange, and dark blue. I see a lot of dark blue popping through. Though I don't have any dark blue sock yarn right now, and I have, a lot of this <laughs> and so that's I think that's what I'm going with plus this is like an orangish yellow and I it's kind of leaning marigold in some lightings and I love marigold like the color and so this just makes me happy I think that's what I'm going with I think they just work together really well so I could obviously change my mind once I get the stripes in there but we will see <laughs> okay that is all for finished objects and projects and cast-ons and whatnot but I do have quite a few acquisitions <laughs> so if you know me you know that I don't ever just splurge and buy a lot of stuff I have been working on building up my yarn stash but it's mostly my own hand dyed yarn um, I haven't had the budget or the privilege to really um, support other dyers or just other yarn companies or anything like that very much but thanks to you all the sunset sweater release and the kit for the sunset sweater went really really well and because of that I got to splurge a little bit on myself to celebrate and um, so I splurged pretty good <laughs> I, I have a budget to stick within and I've saved some of it um, a little bit of it but I've splurged on some things so the things that I got, I tried to get, so backing up, I have a decently large yarn stash right now that I'm really happy with. Um, it's not like overly massive or anything like that. It will take me a while to work through it all. And so I didn't want to go with cheaper yarns that, so that I could get a ton of yarn, right? My, I didn't want to just get a ton of yarn. And so I decided to get more expensive yarns, but fewer like sweater quantities, right? Uh, so I have fewer projects, even though I splurged quite a bit. <laughs> um, but they're very special yarns, and I'm very excited to own them and get to work on them. And they just get to be things 
that I admire, that sit on my shelf for a little while and I admire and then I get to enjoy working on them. They're yarns that I've been wanting to work with for a while and fibers that are interesting and colors that are interesting and fun. And so I'm really excited for them. I'm not planning on working on all of these yarns right here, right now. So if you don't see me casting them on in the next like month or two, don't be like, well, she's wasteful. I'm stretching them out. <laughs> I'm trying to like stretch out the goodness. Um, I like having gorgeous, fun yarn sit on my shelf to admire for a little while before working on them so I can enjoy owning them before I enjoy using them and then enjoy wearing them. So that's my goal. <laughs> so yeah, I don't want to work on all of them right here, right now because some of these are kind of like one in a lifetime yarns for me anyways, right? They might not be for you, but um, so I have a few things to share. And then I have a few just like regular acquisitions. Like this is one of my regular, like I used my hobby money fund to order this yarn, even though it's a really fun little splurge moment for me too there. The stuff that I specifically got with my like, yay, congrats on the sunset sweater splurge experience. <laughs> I got, I guess like four things to show. I'll share, I'll try to go chronological. So, all right, so I have shared before that I want to knit a sweater out of yarn that was grown and or processed in each of the states that we've lived in. So far, that's just Utah, California, and Ohio. And I have Ohio yarn. I have fiber from Utah, from a family friend in Utah that I've lived by, you know, almost my whole life when I lived like at home with my family. And then I have, I haven't had California yarn. I, I couldn't find any fiber from California. When I had my little fund, my like little budget to, to have some fun with, I searched up California yarn mills again and I found this place, Mendo Wool, where it's Mendocino Wool and Fiber Incorporated Inc., right? But their, their website is mendowool.com. Um, I think they're in Northern California. I think. And we lived in Southern California. It's not like a huge deal to me or anything, but here's what I got. I got a lot of, <laughs> they, they sell roving and yarn, but roving is a lot cheaper than yarn is. And it's fun to spin stuff up. You can get really unique and, and custom when you're spinning your own yarn. So um, here's what I got. I got a lot of this. It came with in a cute little box. I'll show, show you, but just to show you the fiber, this is Jacob Wool. It's a breed of sheep. Um, I've never spun or felt Jacob before, like squished it, not felt, felt, but like squished it before I ordered it. So it was a little scary, but I did some research on Jacob before I ordered it. And spinners love Jacob, apparently. Uh, mostly, I think I, I saw a lot of information on just Jacob, like the color is really fun. There's a lot of different natural colors within Jacob wool and it's soft and lustrous and lofty and bouncy. And I can see that like squishing this. I, I agree with those words <laughs> that those characteristics match what I have here. There is a little bit of vegetable, vegetable matter in there, but I'm not like super upset about that. It'll be a lot of fun to spin anyways. And I love the color. It's, it's really fun. It's like this, I don't know if it's brown and gray and like a dark gray, a light gray and a brown heathered together, or if it's like a light gray, like a warm toned darker gray with a light gray heathered in there. Like I'm having a hard time pinning the color, but I really love it. So that'll be a lot of fun to spin up. It'll make a gorgeous heathered yarn. I have a lot of this. They only sell eight ounce boxes. It doesn't come in four ounce increments. It comes in eight ounce increments. And normally for myself for a sweater, I would get like 16 to 20 ounces. I'd probably get 20 ounces. Just, you know, if I'm going for like a DK weight sweater or something like that. But just getting 16 scares me. That's like four ounces of yarn basically. I mean, four skeins of yarn pretty much. Um, and that scares me. <laughs> Especially because spinning, you get, you don't have as much air in the yarn, depending on what techniques you use when you spin yarn by hand. You don't have as much air in there as you would ordering most commercial yarns. And so you're not gonna have quite as much yardage in hand spun yarn as you are in um, like a commercially spun yarn. And so you always need to order extra when you're purchasing yarn for a project or fiber for a project. So just getting two boxes scared me. So I got three boxes. So I have eight, 16, 24 ounces. 
I'm 24 ounces. So I could, I could spin this up into a worsted weight yarn and knit a pretty big bulky chunky sweater and probably still have a little bit left over. Um, but here's the box. <laughs> they, a lot of the fiber that I've gotten from other people, they've like packed it real hard into a little Ziploc bag and like really squished it in there. But this is nice and fluffy and squishy and I have three big boxes. <laughs> so I'm excited to get to spinning this, but like I said, especially cause it's, you know, it's not taking up space. It's taking up a lot of space, but, but I'm excited to just enjoy having it and squishing it for a little while before spinning it up. Um, I actually think I finished my rainbow spin, but my next spin I think is going to be this merino, this dark brown merino wool. So um, I, I'm not going to get to this one extremely soon, but I'm excited to get to it. I'm excited to experiment with different techniques since I have so much of it. Or to blend the leftover bits with something else. That'll be fun too. The next thing that I got is like, whoa, I can't believe I own this yarn. <laughs> I So I told you I fell in love with BFL wool after spinning and knitting up those socks that I showed you, these ones. Um, and I have another like little sweater quantity of BFL roving that I absolutely love. It's so soft and gorgeous. I'm excited to spin that up as well. But I have fallen in love with BFL. And, and I know people rave over that BFL Masham base that's out there. And so I was like, I have cash to burn. I know it's expensive, but I'm gonna do it. And so I did it. There is a, I don't know if it's still available, um, but I know Sonder Yarn Co. They're based in Canada. Oops. Um, they have a kit for the po Pohola. I'm not going to say that right ever. Sweater pullover by Sorry Nordland. I've been loving Sorry Nordland lately, but look how gorgeous that is. I love yellow and that color work yoke is beautiful. <laughs> and so I ordered the kit. They have a kit for it, and I'm so excited. Oh, look at that. I cannot wait. I, I'm so tempted to cast this on. Every time I look at it, I'm like, ooh, let me cast it on, let me cast it on. I don't have time right now to cast it on, and I know I get overwhelmed with so many projects on the needles. I might take it on our trip with us, but look how beautiful those colors are. This is BFL Masham blend 20 or 75 percent bfl 25 percent mash on bfl is just a breed of sheep um they're very lofty and lustrous and squishy oh my goodness i cannot wait to cast that on but again i'll probably just admire these for a little while until i have the needle space and then i'll cast them on but again i'm gonna i'm gonna stretch out the goodness of all these projects throughout the next year or even two so and then next up, I so I saw a sweater on Instagram using Noro yarn, and I've been very interested in Noro for a while. I I didn't want to get the is it the Noro Madara the the rainbowy one, just because I have my rainbow tweed sweater that I'm working on that I spun the yarn for, and I don't need two of those in my life right now. Um, but then I saw somebody knit up a sweater in this one. I think it was this one, the Silk Garden, uh, base, which is forty five percent silk. 45% mohair and 10% wool. And I think this is the colorway that they used. I went to my yarn store because I know that they had um, a lot. I know they carry nor Noro. Like they have two big shelves of Noro. And so I went to the yarn store to see what they had. And they had a ton of these. So I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and I've been interested in trying Noro. And I was like, okay, let's, let's go for it. And I've been wanting one of those sweaters that's like, this <laughs> it's not stripes it's not i mean it's kind of color blocking because as you can see there are dark bits like big chunks of it that are darker colored and big chunks of it that are lighter colored um a trick when you have a variegated yarn is to cake it up and when you can see it in the cake or in the hank or something if you can see big chunks of it that are one color then when you knit it up you're likely going to get those big chunks of color as well so like there's going to be sections in my sweater that are going to be light like a cream color, and there's gonna be sections of my sweater that are this this brown, this um, like fawn color, this light tan color, I don't know. And so it's gonna be interesting when it's knit up. It's not gonna be your typical like micro stripe variegated. It's gonna be like big chunks of color blocking, kinda sorta, but in a good way, and I am excited about it. I've been wanting something similar to that, 
And so here we go. I'm excited. I've heard amazing things about this yarn, and so I'm excited to try it for myself. And it was fun to like actually support my local yarn store. I haven't been able to like really spend a lot of money at the yarn store before. Um, I've gotten like little t-shirt quantities or little, like I get wool wash there a lot, um, needles every now and then, stuff like that. But I haven't splurged on a sweater quantity from there and so I'm glad that I was able to like support them because it's a great yarn store and I love them and they're so sweet and helpful and kind so that was nice and then I ordered from Knitting for Olive like directly from Knitting for Olive I have never seen or squished or felt or anything Knitting for Olive yarn in person before and I know people love them and I wanted to try it out and when my wooden enemy sweater wasn't working out so well I was looking at other sweaters on my make night. Like I was thinking about just getting yarn from Knitting for Olive for the Wooden Enemy, but then I was like, but I just kinda wanna take a break on that for now, especially cause we're getting into spring, right? And so I got yarn for the Poetry Pullover Mohair Edition by Sari Nordland instead. I think this is gonna be so good. So I got a sweater quantity for that. Um, I'm definitely casting this one on soon. I think it's the perfect little spring sweater because it's white, so it's a nice spring color, I think. And it's all over lace. Like, I'm doing the one that's all over lace. She has quite a few poetry sweaters. She's actually doing a cowl right now, a knit along. And I ordered the yarn before she announced the cowl. I was like, well, perfect. <laughs> I'm excited because this one's just going to be light and airy and lacy and just cute, I think. I think it'll be perfect for spring. And so... I'm casting this one on soon. I think this is going to be my next cast on. Either this or that um, yellow striped t-shirt that I showed you. But I'm really excited for that. I'm just thrilled to own all these, these yarns because I love them all. And I, I just love, like, these are really soft. This has an interesting texture. I think it'll soften up with blocking. And same with this. I think this will really bloom and soften up with blocking. So I'm just excited for all of these things. I, am, I ordered a couple more things from Knitting for Olive because I was ordering from across, you know, the world. But that's technically with birthday money. My birthday's not till April. So we're pretending those don't exist until my birthday. They're locked away. I'll wrap them up for my birthday. We'll, we'll call it a day. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, I think that is all for today. Be sure to... Keep your eye out for test calls and um, keep your be sure to keep your eye open for test call for the hazy stripe sweater <laughs> or whatever the name ends up being for that one. Uh, if you want to make sure to get to see when test calls come out, be sure to go follow me on Instagram. And the best thing that you can do if you really want to not miss out on applying for test calls for me is to follow me on Instagram and then hit the follow button on my page again and click favorites right underneath that add me to your favorite list so then my posts come up higher in your feed whenever you're on instagram so you don't miss any of my posts that's just one thing that you can kind of do to ensure that you see test calls for me in the future or anytime i like release new yarn or kits or whatever like that you can also um be sure to subscribe here and then hit the notification bell that's essentially the same thing is to make sure you're not ever missing out on anything from me um it also helps me a lot in the algorithm hint hint if you want to help a girl out <laughs> um but all in all thank you all very much for your support i'm always in awe at how how amazing this community is and how much support you all show me and show others and i just love being part of this community um so thank you thank you thank you for being here and for all the engagement and the love and the support um just thank you. <laughs> so yes, that is all for today. I will see you next time. There's probably gonna be a lot to update you on next time because again, we're going on vacation. All I'm gonna do is knit. So hopefully we have lots of good stuff to show next time. I'm excited. Um, but yes, yeah, see you then. Thanks again for coming. I'll see you next time. Bye.